before my time expires, would you say that deficit finance tax cuts tend to pay for themselves? No, I, it's very, uh, except in very rare circumstances, um, I don't think many people, uh, including many good friends of mine on both sides of the aisle, would argue that, that uh, tax cuts uh, fully pay for themselves. The question is whether or not they improve efficiency and growth, but not whether they fully pay for themselves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you. Mr. Young. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you, Dr. Bernanke, for uh, visiting with us today. Um, clearly, this economic recovery has, has been uh, long delayed. It remains fragile. Uh, my constituents are frustrated, as are so many of us uh, uh, serving them, that uh, uh, we're not uh, doing some things here on the fiscal uh, side of the ledger to get the economy moving more quickly. Uh, 2011, real GDP growth was 1.7%. Uh, private sector forecasts indicate that in the coming year, we're going to be at 2.2 percent. That is well below the 3 percent uh, growth that uh, trends uh, recent history. We have a jobs deficit, uh, uh, 8.6 million jobs lost in the 08-09 recession, uh, less than a third of those recovered. I'm really concerned about our country tipping back into recession at this point, maybe as a result of Europe. We spent some time discussing Europe here today. Uh, in your interaction with ECB officials and others. Uh, but what I'd like to hear from you, uh, Doctor, is what preparation uh, our Fed has made for a orderly, uh, ex excuse me, a disorderly default by Greece or some of these other countries within Europe. I haven't heard any specifics there. You have indicated that uh, the Fed was prepared to use all the different uh, levers uh, that you have, all policy options. So that's the general question, but specifically, I'd also like you to speak to uh, the money market mutual fund uh, uh, market. Right after Lehman, there was a bailout of the money market mutual funds uh, because over, of panic over so-called breaking the buck. That is, uh, the investment income wouldn't cover all operating expenses. It wouldn't cover all the investment losses. And, and so there was an intervention uh, by the United States into that market. Could that also be something that uh, um, people begin demanding right here in Washington. We bail out the money uh, markets as a result of a disorderly uh, default in Europe. So in terms of preparations, um, other than beyond the swaps which we just discussed, um, the Federal Reserve has been operating uh, as in a supervisory capacity, working with other bank supervisors to understand the ex exposures of banks uh, to European nations, to European banks, European economies, um, trying to help them manage the risks and reduce the risk wherever possible. We've been doing that. Um, the other set of tools that we have um, in the event of a, of a crisis, which I think would, if it was severe enough, would have very adverse effects for our economy and our financial system, no matter how well prepared we are, um, is the uh, modified 13-3 authorities that um, Dodd-Frank left us. Um, we can, of course, first use the discount window, as we always do, as a backstop liquidity provision for banks uh, that come under pressure from funders. And if necessary, we could use the 13-3 authority to provide additional programs um, to lend to other uh, institutions that uh, are under funding pressure. So we would try to mitigate the, uh, any resulting uh, contagion from problems in the banking sector or in, um, uh, in the economies of Europe. The, we, we pay close attention to money market mutual funds. Of course, the SEC is the primary regulator there. Um, they too, like our banks, have been uh, working to reduce their exposure to Europe. They have substantially reduced their exposure to the Eurozone countries, um, and all that's to the good. Um, is, if I could interject briefly, is there a reason why the Financial Stability Oversight Council created by Dodd-Frank to monitor systemic risk, risk did not characterize, has not characterized the money market mutual funds as a systemic risk in this case? Well, I think it, um, it did actually in July. It did point to money market mutual funds as an area that needed more work. You mentioned the, uh, the bailout, the, the things that were done in 2008, such as the Treasury uh, using the Exchange Stabilization Fund to guarantee uh, money market mutual fund deposits are, were outlawed by Dodd-Frank, and so those things aren't available. So it's very important that the um, money market mutual funds 
take the necessary actions to be safe in the event of some kind of problem. As I said, one thing they're doing is reducing the risk and their exposures, um, but the SEC, which has already uh, imposed some improvements in the regulation of these funds, is considering additional steps and consulting with the Federal Reserve, and, and we are quite sympathetic to the idea that more might need to be done in order to uh, ensure that we don't see another run like we did in 2008. Yield back my remaining two seconds. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Rokita. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, thanks for coming back uh, again. It's good to talk to you. As I said yesterday to the other witness, it's about this time in the day that we always seem to talk to each other and trying to synthesize uh, everything that's been said. Uh, I have a few, dis several distinct questions. And if we can be succinct in our answers as much as possible, you may have repeated it, and if so, just say so. Uh, you may be repeating, and if so, just say so. First of all, um, this discussion about the inflation and, and we talked about this the last time we talked via microphone here. When you say there's, you're not worried about the increase in inflation, I, my layman's way of looking at this is that when you're print, effectively printing money through the quantitative easing and the money's piling up, the, the inflation may be measured by the lack of, lack of velocity or velocity when, when that money changes hands. And so it's, it's, it's my perception that the banks are holding on to the money because to make sure the this, this sheet's balanced for the regulators and, and for fiscal soundness. People might